Hello everyone. Welcome to the second lecture in Literature and Globalization. In this lecture we will talk about American Dervish. American Dervish is a 2012 novel by Ayad Akhtar. Introduction American Dervish is 2012 novel by Ayad Akhtar. The novel tells the story of a young Pakistani-American boy growing up in American Midwest and his struggle with his identity and religion. The novel has been published in English, Italian, Norwegian, Dutch, Danish and Spanish. Background of the novel Ayad Akhtar was raised in the Brookfield, suburb of Milwaukee, like his main character Hayat. As an adult, he often wondered how the lives of women he had known as in childhood were affected by their faith. He decided to explore the idea through the novel. My sense of the polarities at play for the Muslim women I saw in my childhood is a good part of what makes up the central story of American Dervish. In it, the brilliant and be beautiful Mina Ali immigrates to America to rebuild her life after a terrible marriage and ugly divorce back in Pakistan. In America, living with her best friend's family, she transformed the lives of all she encounters. She is filled with a spiritual force, the book's most powerful and inspiring agent of change. And yet, she is a paradox, deeply devout, bound by her tradition, subject in tragic ways to a patriarchal order with which she struggles. In my novel, this is an unresolved tension, said by Akhtar and one that I believe reflects a much larger picture and one in which not only Muslims find themselves today. Inspired by authors like Herman and Toni Morrison who use biblical references in their novels, he included passages from the Quran in his text. Akhtar finished the novel in 2010 and sent it to the various publishing companies. Little, Brown and Company bought the manuscript for a six-figure sum the day after they received it. Now let me talk about plot summary. Hayat Shah, a young Pakistani-American, lives in a boring suburb of Milwaukee with his unhappy married parents, who are secular Muslims. His mother's best friend Mina and her son Imran come from Pakistan to stay with the family, escaping her ex-husband who threatens to take away Imran. Mina brightens the lives of Shah family, becoming especially close with the Hayat, tell him Sophie's stories and teaching him the Quran. Hayat becomes obsessed with being a Hafiz, someone who can recite the entire Quran from memory. After Mina tell him that the parents of Hafiz are guaranteed a place in paradise. Meanwhile, she meets Dr. Shah's best friend Nathan and fall in love with him. Nathan, who is Jewish, explores Islam and even expresses an interest in converting. Dr. Shah is an atheist and warns his best friend not to convert as he believes the local imam is only interested in money. When Hayat, Nathan and Dr. Shah go to the mosque to see the imam about Nathan converting, he preaches an anti-Semitic khutbah, devastating Nathan. Hayat is jealous when he realizes that Nathan and Mina are still planning on marrying. He sends a telegram to her ex-husband, revealing that Mina is marrying Nathan. Mina's family threatens to disform her if she marries him, and Nathan moves away to Boston. Dr. Shah angrily forbids his son to read the Quran and burns Hayat copy, 
although he secretly reads it at school in his effort to become a Hafiz. Against the Shah's objection, Meena decides to marry Sunil, a divorced Pakistani man from Kansas. During her wedding, Hayat discovers from Faraz that true Hafiz recite the Quran in Arabic, while he has only been learning it in English. As a result, Hayat gives up on the Quran for many years. After her marriage, Meena realized that her new husband is controlling and abusive. He forces her to move back to Kansas with him. Eight years later, when Meena is dying of a cancer, Hayat finally confesses to her that he sent the telegram. She forgives him and after she dies, he sees Nathan and learns that the couple had been secretly keeping contact. Let me talk about the characters of the novel. Hayat Shah, an American boy of Pakistan descent, naive and curious. Dr. Naveed Shah, Hayat's father, who is a doctor who does important MRI research. He is an atheist because of a difficult childhood with his abusive and passionately re religious mother. He is unfaithful to his wife and is an alcoholic. Munir Shah, Hayat's mother, who is unhappily because of her husband's disloyalties. She teaches her son to avoid anti-Semitism to treat women with respect. Amina, Mina, Ali Sohail, Muni's beautiful and intelligent best friend. Mina's deep faith has a great influence on Hayat. Imran Sohail, Mina's spoiled and lonely son. Imran is obsessed with his birth father. Dr. Nathan, Dr. Shah colleagues, and best friend, a kind and sensitive man. Ghalib, a local pharmacist, pious and judgmental. Adnan, the local imam. Sunil Tata, Ghalib cousins, and a failed ophthalmologist. His first wife divorced him due to his erratic and abusive behavior. Faraz Hassan, a 15 years old boy who has memorized the whole Quran. Rafiq and Rabia Ali, Mina's parents. Rachel, Hayat's college girlfriend. Jason Blum, Hayat's best friend in elementary school. Now let's talk about the major themes of the novel. Identity, assimilation and Muslim life are the major themes in the novel. Hayat struggle with his identity as a Muslim while Mina, his father and his mother all have different ideas of what being Muslim means. Akhtar has spoken of his desire to write a book that would address the American religious experience but from the point of view of a Muslim boy. On this slide, let me talk about the reception of the book. American Dervish received mainly positive reception from literary critics. The New York Times called it self-assured and effortlessly told first novel. People called it ambitious but accessible and give it 3.5 star out of 4, saying that the book brought resonance to the universal question of belief and belonging. Rayan Al-Shawaf in Brooklyn Rail called the work near revolutionary, characterizing it as an unflinchingly careful examination of the tense and much manipulated subject of Muslim scripture. However, the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel compared the book unfavorably with the James Joyce, a portrait of the artist as a young man. Literary critics of Pakistani origin reviewed the book positively. Nazneen Sheikh in Toronto's The Globe and Mail called attention to the faultless mimicry of spoken language of community of Pakistani immigrants in American suburbia. 
Amina Elai of Divani called the book a brutally honest account of Pakistani American Muslim beliefs and hypocrisy. Now let's analyze the book, analyze the novel. This novel deals with the loss of identity since identity is not fixed and singular. It is fluid, multiple, relational in process. Everyone is fitting into a fluidity and multiplicity of his or her own identity. The novel manipulates the analytical study method in order to show how Ayad Akhtar makes use of characterization, plot, and the, re the interrelations between characters to convey the theme of the loss of identity to the readers. Ayad Shah is the most representative character of the second generation of Pakistani immigrants to the States. Whereas his father, Nawid Shah, best displays the loss of identity of the first generation in the novel. Mercier Silman points out that Achter also explored the subject of identity in his first published novel, Dervish. Since Hayat Shah and his father are two of the most important characters in the novel. Nawid Shah and his family the other character who represent the loss of Islamic identity among the elder generation in American Dervish is Hayat's father, Nawicha. Throughout the novel, the author makes it quite apparent that Navid is a hateful character for a handful of reasons. First, his wife Munir mentions nothing about him but his relation with the white mistresses. Hayat, the son, observe. I heard more tales from mother about father's mistresses than anything else. Another important theme is the loss of the Muslim American identity in America. The foremost theme in the novel seems to be the loss of, Amer loss of Muslim American identity in America at the time when the novel was shut in. Such themes focuses the reader's attention in, on the issues obeying to the Islamic belief in America in the post-9-11 era. It is a message from the author to show to what extent it is so difficult to follow one's belief once they find themselves assimilating with other people of a different beliefs and suffering because of their own creeds. Neither a dervish nor a half is. By the end of the novel, the reader realizes the fact that Hayat cannot be the American dervish for many reasons. First, he now discards all the Islamic teachings and tenets. He also points out that his identity in America hinges solely on his intimacy with the Jewish people and community, especially with the ritual. In doing so, Hayat has to renounce his fellow people, the Muslims in general, and the Pakistanis in particular. Finally, though American Dervish is Ayan Dachta debut novel, it is a sensitive coming-of-age story. The novel wisely depicts social, cultural, religious clashes since its bridges cultural divide and builds understanding. And Akhta tells a rich and heartbreaking story about the limits of religion and the hazard of love. It is no wonder that American dervish crystallizes the heated struggle between generations, religions, cultures and races. Mr. Akhta's intelligent observations of the clashes between old world and new, between secular and sacred, among immigrants might seem familiar to readers of both contemporary and classic culture. Assignments For this short lecture, I'm just going to give you assignment. Here they are. You're going to write an analytical essay on American Dervish. Once again, you will write an analytical essay on American Dervish. 
and the length of this would be some sort of 1,000 words. Secondly, what role does this novel might play in the process of globalization in literature? Again, what role does this novel might play in the process of globalization in literature? Now, answering this, you would need to write and fold up all of this in 1,500 words. That is how we come to the end of this short lecture. Before I say bye to you, keep stay home. Try to wash your hands once you come back out of home. And try to cooperate and contribute with this coronavirus thing so that this country gets safe from this and we come back on normal life and come back to the university and see each other face to face. Allah Hafiz.